Hey everyone, in this video we'll talk about the forward-backward algorithm, which is the third part in our series about hidden Markov models. And this algorithm solves a different problem than what we have seen before with the Viterbi algorithm. Remember that in the last video we used Viterbi to find the most likely sequence of hidden states given our observations, but sometimes we don't just want the single best path, and instead we want to know the probability of being in each state at each time point. And that's exactly what the four backward algorithm gives us. Let me explain why this matters by going back to our mood example where someone's internal emotional state, either sad or happy, influences what color hat they choose to wear each day. With Viterbi, we could say given that we saw red, green and blue hats, the most likely mood sequence was happy, sad, sad. But what if we wanted to know something more nuanced, like what's the probability that the person was sad on day 2, given all 3 days of hat observations? This is where forward-backward algorithm comes in, and it's actually two algorithms working together to give us these probabilities. The forward algorithm starts from the beginning and computes alpha t of i, which represents the probability of seeing all observations up to time t and being in state i at that time. So, if we are at day 2 and considering the sad state, alpha 2 of sad tells us the probability of seeing the red hat on day 1, the green hat on day 2 and ending up in the sad state on day 2. We calculate this by taking all the ways we could have gotten to this point. We could have been sad on day 1 and stayed sad or we could have been happy on day 1 and transitioned to sad. And for each path we multiply the previous alpha value by the transition probability and the emission probability of seeing ren given sad. And then we add all these parts together. The Packard algorithm works in the opposite direction. Starting from the end and working backwards, computing beta t of i, which represents the probability of seeing all future observations from time t plus 1 to the end, given that we are in state i at time t. The initialization is simple, beta equals 1 for all states because there are no future observations to consider. Then we work backwards by considering all the states we could transition to next, multiplying by the appropriate transition and emission probabilities, and summing them up. Now, here is where the magic happens. When we multiply alpha t of i and beta t of i together, we get the probability of the entire observation sequence and being in state i at time t. And if we normalize this by dividing by the sum over all states, we get gamma t of i, which is exactly what we wanted. The probability of being state i at the time t given all the observations. Think about it this way. Alpha brings us all the evidence from the past up to time t. Beta brings us all the evidence from the future after time t. And when we combine them, we have all the evidence from the entire sequence focused on that specific time point. Now, let me walk through a concrete example using the same hidden Markov model we have been working with throughout this series. We have our star state that connects to two hidden mood states, sad and happy, with the initial probabilities of 0.6 for sad and 0.4 for happy, which means there is a 60% chance of starting a sad mood and a 40% chance of starting happy. And again, the transition matrix A tells us how likely we are to move between states, where we have a 0.7 probability of staying sad if we are already sad, a 0.3 probability of transitioning from sad to happy, a 0.4 probability of going from happy to sad, and a 0.6 probability of staying happy. The emission matrix B shows us the probabilities of observing different hat colors given each mood state. If someone is sad, there is only a 0.1 chance they'll wear red, a 0.4 chance of green and a 0.5 chance of blue. But if they are happy, there is a 0.8 chance of red and only 0.1 for both green and blue. Now let's see how the forward-backward algorithm works with the three-day observation sequence of red, green and blue hats. For the four paths on day one, 
we compute alpha 1 of sad as p sad times b sad of red, which is 0 0.6 times 0 0.1 equals 0 0.06, and alpha 1 of happy as 0 0.4 times 0 0.8 equals 0 0.32. Moving to day 2, we compute alpha 2 of sad by taking alpha 1 of sad times a sad to sad times b sad of green, which is 0 0.06 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.4 plus alpha 1 of happy times a of happy to sad times b sad of green, which is 0 0.32 times 0 0.4, and when we add these together, we get 0 0.0512. For the backward pass, we start at day 3 with beta 3 of sad and beta 3 of happy, both equal to 1. Then working backwards to day 2, we compute beta 2 of sad as a sad to sad times b sad of blue times beta 3 of sad plus a sad to happy times b happy of blue times beta 3 of happy and similarly for the other calculations. Then, when we combine the forward and backward values, we can compute that on day 1, given all 3 days of observations, and there is about an 8.6% chance the person was sad and a 91.4% chance they were happy, which makes sense because you observe a red hat and happy people are much more likely to wear red. The four backward algorithm is essentially for training hidden Markov models through the bomb welch algorithm, which we'll cover in the next video. Because to update our model parameters, we need to know these taste probabilities at each time point. Also, this algorithm is used in speech recognition to compute confidence scores in financial modeling to estimate the probability of being in different market regimes and in bioinformatics to identify functional regions in DNA sequences. And the key insight is that while Viterbi commits to a single best path through the states, the four backward algorithm keeps all possibilities open and gives us a complete probabilistic picture at each time point. And this makes it perfect for applications where we need soft decisions rather than hard assignments. In our next video, We'll see how to use these probabilities to actually learn the parameters of hidden Markov models from data when we don't know them in advance, which is the bomb welch algorithm. And that's basically how the four Becker algorithm works with hidden Markov models. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this explanation, share your thoughts in the comments below, and subscribe to be up to date with the new videos I'm releasing on this channel. See you next time. Bye bye.